Here it is, finally, the video about how I met my husband, Omar. Okay, so um, it's a little bit complicated because I kind of met my husband before he was incarcerated, technically. I met him like once. And then I met him again later on after he was incarcerated where we got to know each other like a lot better. Um, so this video is actually for my friend Cassandra with whom I worked for all of three days. And um, shout out to her for requesting this video. Uh, thank you to my people, uh, my niece Sarai, my friend Boy Johnny, uh, who provided excellent advice about this video. And also shout out to the girl who did my hair. Her name is Jewel. And um, I'll give a shout out to her school later because I can't remember the name of it. Hollywood Institute of Hair or something. Sorry. Um, okay, so how I met my husband. The first time we met was um, around the year 2000. And it was at the Church of God in Tampa, Florida. Um, his brother introduced us once. I don't remember meeting my future husband then because I was like around 14 years old-ish. Um, and because I thought my ideal guy looked like Thor and I was too busy talking to his brother and getting to know him. Um, my husband now, like nowadays, he says that, um, he thought that I talked too much back then and we were teenagers and we were clearly not impressed with each other and we were definitely not in like with each other. Cause again, I don't even remember him. And plus he respected the fact that his brother was actually talking to me. And that's all we ever did was talk. Thank God. All right. So fast forward to December of 2007, uh, when I moved to LA the first time, I worked nights and I got in contact with my teenage crush, meaning my future husband's brother, um, my teenage crush's mother. And she was nice to me and she let me crash at her place when I got home from work after four o'clock in the morning. And I worked at Los Angeles International Airport or LAX. And at that point um, in time, my future husband was already in prison. He called the house one time when I was there um, at his mom's house. Um, but I don't recall us really like talking at all. He didn't know me and I didn't really know him. And so he asked me to speak to his mom or his siblings, like whoever's around. I literally think he might have asked like kind of who are you and what are you doing at my, at my house? And I might have, might have explained myself a bit, but we didn't exactly have a conversation then either. We did not hit it off in like that time frame. So around June 2009, I moved back to Florida and then I would chat with his mom every so often and, you know, he'd send people text messages, funny things on Facebook, whatever. Anytime I'd be in contact with her, I called her my LA mom, my mom in LA, because she used to playfully spank me sometimes. So I would get in touch with her and I'd ask her, hey, how are you doing, etc. How's the family, this, this and this. And she would always, always tell me that I should write to her son. I'm like, why would I write to your son? I don't know him and he doesn't know me and so on and so forth. So for, uh, this lasted three years, she nagged at me and I kept saying, no, I don't know him. He probably doesn't even remember me, etc." So she eventually wore me down as nagging mothers will. And she wore me down and I started writing to her son. And we wrote as just friends uh, from about early 2012 to late 2017 or so-ish, give or take, maybe up to 2016, I'm really not sure. Anyway, there were months that would go by without my letters to him, but eventually I would write back to him and I'm like, oh, this isn't actually the response to your really long letter. This is actually me responding to you so that you'll, you know, you won't think that I've forgotten about you completely, which, which I haven't forgotten you. I just, I've been busy. Um, I was um, starting life, you know, the bachelor's degree. So I had done my AA degree already and I was starting in on my bachelor's when I first started writing to him. So my life was super busy. Um, in early 2017, I visited Europe and I would send him postcards from the cities that I would visit. And I actually got to see Paris for like three days. So that was really cool. Um, November, 2017, I moved back to LA again and right into his mom's house. Hi, LA mom. Thanks for letting me stay at your house. And so, um, once there, um, one day I was sitting around at her house, you know, just chilling and I had just moved there and she calls me. And so his mom's calling me. I answer the phone and I'm all, you know, hello. And then she had done a three-way call, but she didn't tell him what was going on. She had told him, at least she told him, I have a surprise for you. She told me nothing. I get a random phone call and I think it's her on the other line. And I hear basically, um, a male, a male voice on the phone, a man's very deep voice. And I was just like, who's this? Like, why is this not the person that I think it is? And I almost hung up because I didn't know what was going on. She is not really good at communicating. That's just the way she is. So he and I did a back and forth of who's this for like at least three different times. Like, who's this? Who's this? You know, and then um, eventually it took me a good full minute to figure it out. But my brain is ADHD fast. So um, I figured it out that it was him because I figured out it couldn't be anyone else on the world but him. And he denied it was him. 
<laughs> because that's my husband for you. And I told him, like, look, this is Carmi, and you need to stop messing around. We don't have this kind of time. Like, this is a timed phone call of 15 minutes, and at this point, we have a lot less time than that, so let's just talk. So we talked. Don't ask me what we talked about. I don't remember. Um, he asked me, I guess he asked me that when were we going to go visit him and stuff like that. I said, I don't know, which was the truth. And he had sent me a visiting form back in like 2016, but I had was afraid of like filling it out with like my Florida address and stuff. So um, I literally just never sent it in. And so when by the time I did send it in, we're talking sometime in November, December 2017, um, I had gotten denied um, to visit him. And um, we were able to fix it, thank God, with a phone call or so. But this was three to four days right before we were actually able to visit him. So I'm very grateful we were able to fix this over the phone. Um, we visited him on the dates of December the 30th, 2017, up to January 1st of 2018. Um, I was finally approved to visit him. Well, again, those three to four days right before that happened. And I didn't know that he was going to get informed about me becoming an approved visitor. And his mom told me to lie to him. So I did because she said, oh, you should lie to him. So it'll be a total surprise. It kind of was a surprise later on when I come to find out that he had gotten informed that I was an approved visitor. So it wasn't such a surprise to him. So we kind of lied to him for nothing. Um, and, and he was on to us real quick. So he's like, all, oh, is that how it's going to be? Yeah, that's how it was. He's so silly. All right. And when we did go visit him, there were a lot of rules to follow at High Desert State Prison for visitors. There's the dress code protocols, what you can and can't bring with you. And I will try to do another video real soon. I know I've been like, you know, dropping the ball and making videos for you guys, but I will definitely try to make a video soon about what it's like to do a regular visit at a prison in California anyway. Those are the only ones I've ever been to, right? So um, so again, long story short, uh, we visited him for those three days that I mentioned from the 30th December of 2017 up to January 1st of 2018. Those three days, we, um, we got to see him three days straight because of the holiday on January 1st. And I literally talked his ears off, but he says he didn't mind because he was like really like into like engrossed into listening to me. And um, he really truly understood me like no other person has ever understood me. I've never encountered such a thing. And so the next day, January 2nd, 2018, he called me. I told him, hey, so your mom and I kind of just totally planned out your life. And um, the plan for your life here is that you and me, we're going to get married. And he was just like, okay. And I said, okay, are you serious? Because I mean, unless you really dr truly have any objections, then, you know, let's do this. And he's like, yeah, no, no objections. I was like, all right, cool. Send me the marriage package. That's a whole nother video for another time. The marriage packet. The marriage packet is um, a five, ten, at least 10 different paperwork that are all stapled together that you get to fill out before you get married to someone that's in prison, at least again in the state of California. Um, each prison has a different type of marriage packet or different requirements. Um, I would only be able to speak towards the, pr the prison where we got married, which was High Desert State Prison in um, Susanville, California. That's the only one I would have any information about. And by now I don't remember it and I didn't exactly make um, copies or I don't remember everything that the marriage packet entailed. Again, whole nother video. Uh, that, that's a whole nother video. Um, I, okay, he called me, we talked, I told him, hey, we're getting married. He said, okay. <laughs> Easiest proposal of my life. Um, he did not object. I asked him to send me the marriage packet by mail. Um, it took me a couple of weeks to fill, fill it out and, you know, um, provide. Um, his birth certificate was in Spanish. I had to translate that myself and get it notarized, by the way. So, yeah, that happened. And I mailed it out. We got married in March of 2018. And the rest is blissful history. Um, I won't deny that we have had our ups and downs. Uh, but we are happy and in love today. And um, in March, in a couple of months, we are going on our three years of wedded bliss. So it's been a roller coaster. It's been awesome. And it's been like, I've been down in the dumps at times. I've cried. I'm sure he's had his moments of like feeling really bad or lonely or just a certain way about, you know, all kinds of things. Um, and I'm not physically with him right now. We haven't had visits since March of last year. So um, from March, it's been over 10 months since I've seen his face, since I've gotten to like really talk to him. Um, yes, we do have um, phone calls. Uh, we still write letters. We still do stuff like that. But it's really, it's tough. But um, I wouldn't really wish this kind of life on anyone and uh, prison wives. I commend all my fellow prison wives. You know, this, this job, it, it's, um, it is kind of a job to be with someone in prison and it's not easy, so.
shout out to my fellow prison wives. Bye.